won't have the form. No. For signing on and checking us out here on Alyssa Goodman's Instagram account, we are live mm -hmm. behind you. Dan, sorry. Uh, yes. And Dan, uh, we're ready for your request, but I will just let me give you a little 411 information about Dan Buettner if you don't know too much about him. So he discovered the five places in the world dubbed the Blue Zone hotspots where people live the longest and the healthiest lives. His New York Times Square, uh, Times Sunday Magazine article, The Island Where People Forget to Die, was the second most popular article of 2012. He founded Blue Zones to put the world's best practices in longevity and well-being to work in people's lives. Yay. He is a New York Times best-selling author, an explorer, an educator, a public speaker. He co-founded an Emmy award-winning documentary. Three, yes, three Guinness records for long-distance cycling. What? Okay, so Dan, your newest book right here is about to hit the shelf. Is he there? Hi! Nice to meet you, Dan. Hi! Thank My you for coming on with us. So appreciated. And, and I love it. For a very long time, yeah. And I love it. Both of you are on brand, wearing blue and looking beautiful, I might add. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we said we're both Team Dan. We are Team Dan. Oh, I love it. I love, I'm already extending a telephonic hug. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's so Thank great you. to meet you guys. We well, have, it's yeah. great to meet you, too. Uh, we have a couple. First of all, we're so happy for your new book. Is yes. this your fifth book? I think it's my tenth book. Oh, wow. Yeah. I had, a, I wrote books even before Blue Zones, but it, it's the second book that really focuses on the a, a, a diet of longevity. And, uh, okay. you know, I found, I, I was a science journalist for many years, and I found that most people's journey to a healthier life begins through their mouth. You know, you can sort of talk about purpose and exercise and social but people like to eat good food. So these books are my effort to kind of introduce this, this um, uh, prescriptive we learned uh, by traveling to the world's longest lived areas and, and seeing how people who actually make it into their 80s, 90s, and 100 looking great, feeling vital, and living with, largely without chronic disease, what exactly they do. And this book is kind of trying to uh, unpack a different version of what they eat. There, Dan, there's definitely some things in this book that I've never heard of, which was really fun, um, that most people haven't heard of here. You know, def there was, I can't remember what it was. Um, well, first of all, was, could you tell us about the, you know, the purple sweet potato? Oh, yeah. That's, I find that really interesting. And do you know that I have spent, you know, so much the last, like, 20 years staying away from sweet potatoes because in my mind they really? were um, yeah I'm well you know I, I generally like to frame what I say by this is what the world's longest lived people do so rather than getting involved in micronutrients or trying to be a guru or something you know the idea behind blue zones is we found the statistically longest lived areas with National Geographic and then really over a course of 20 years with an enormous team of scientists tried to distill down exactly what they do to live to 100 and exactly how they ate. And you know, if you want to know what a centenarian ate to live to be 100, you have to know what they've eaten most of their lives. And you can't just ask them because they don't remember. I mean, if I asked you guys what you ate a week ago Tuesday for lunch, you probably couldn't remember. So we relied on dietary surveys that have been done over the past hundred years in all blue zones. So actually finding out what the populations were eating when they centenarians were kids and when they were 20 and new, middle age and newly retired, and then you get a worldwide average. But one of the interesting things to your question, I'm sorry, I'm long winded about this. Uh, we found that before 1970, in Okinawa, Japan, the place that produced the longest lived women in the history of the world, about 30 times more centenarians among women there, uh, about 70% of their dietary intake came from sweet potatoes alone. And a type of sweet potato they call emo, which is a purple sweet potato, which sounds terribly exotic, but you can get it at Whole Foods. These days, you can. Yeah, yeah. these days, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These days. 
Yeah. You know, Dan, this was it. Moro Misa Moringa. Like, what is that all about? Well, okay, so I, I just, here's the, you know, I'm not even a professional chef. The, the whole idea behind the book, Blue Zone American Kitchen, is we captured the dietary pattern in these blue zones where people are living statistically longest. Right. And then once we identified that, then I hired an NYU researcher and we worked 150 hours to go through archives. We found about 80 different studies, parsed through them. And we found, we were looking for cultures uh, that were eating a longevity diet here in America. And we found them through uh, among four ethnicities, largely, the African Americans, Asian Americans, Latin Americans, and Native Americans. And specifically, the way they were eating before about 1930, and more sugar and meat and processed foods started to come on the scene. So remarkably, these sort of under-celebrated Americans are eating the best version of a standard American diet. And uh, I grabbed National Geographic's best photographer, uh, David McLean, and while most people were hunkering down during the pandemic, we uh, rented sprinter vans and we started up in Maine, went down to Miami, over to Maui, through Texas and New Orleans and Los Angeles. We should have stopped by and seen you guys. And then up to Minnesota. And we found 53 chefs who could recreate these artisanal heritage recipes. Wow. And what's remarkable about these are inexpensive ingredients you notice there's you know no caviar in any of our or, you know no. fancy truffles it's all sort right. of the the type of food that any american mom could could afford yeah uh, but there is in some cases centuries of observed trial and error that make these these foods it's very simple kind of peasant foods taste absolutely delicious and I really relied on the chefs to tell me what they put in there. I actually got to try all of these things. And then I had, I had two filters. The first filter was my 87-year-old dad who grew up on a farm eating meat and potatoes. And if he didn't like it, it didn't make it into the book because that was sort of the middle America filter. Right. And then we had a small team uh, actually in Los Angeles who – tasted all the foods, and then they, they corrected the recipe. I mean, you know, so the recipes were, uh, ingredients were, you know, spot on. And um, so I, I relied, what I did was aggregate the genius of other chefs rather than assert that, although I'm a pretty good chef. Right. Oh, also, I want to say, didn't your parents just celebrate their 63rd wedding anniversary? They did, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Roger and Dolly. I'm very lucky. We uh, we we spent Thanksgiving. Our whole family spent Thanksgiving in Tunisia, and uh, oh, it occurred to me how lucky I am to have uh, parents of that age, that age. who that can are not only travel across the earth, but also right. they're a lot of fun. That's right. Great. That is great. Yeah, you're lucky to have Roger and Dolly for sure. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> We, we're looking forward to like having that with our kids too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And by the way, we're all the same age. So yeah. longevity uh, and, and living to a hundred, a healthy life. Uh, we're on the same, same page that you are for that. So yeah. we appreciate well, all you got, you guys that. look great for 40. And <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You gave us the 20 year of you made it. So yeah, yeah. I run a cleanse. I don't know if you looked me up. I do a food delivery program in LA and it mostly is legume and bean and very, very plant forward. Some grains, it's very much the way that you talk about. And I just find it so fascinating how many people that go on the program are like, I'm missing my animal protein. You know, I'm missing my fat. Like it just is crazy how we just are so focused on those two things. And that beans and legumes have become something that people don't really feel good eating because they don't eat enough of them. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. You know, people, the thing is, you know, we have this microbiome that weighs actually about eight pounds. It's kind of gross, but I mean, it's in a way the biggest organ in our body, 100 trillion cells. And the cells that there's a diversity, there's about a thousand species of actually bacteria, not cells, single cell bacteria. But uh, the, the bacteria that bloom are the ones that get fed. So if you're eating meat, cheese, and eggs, the bacteria that bloom 
literally putrefy. The word putrefy actually comes from the process of this bacteria converting meat, cheese, and eggs into these byproducts that get into your liver. And we know that they're known uh, 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 create cancerous compounds. If you feed your microbiome things like beans, high fiber, it takes a while for the right bacteria to bloom. But once they do, then you have no problem. So if you start, if you want to start eating beans, which I argue are the cornerstone of every longevity diet in the world, uh, eat a cup of beans a day. It's probably worth four years of life expectancy. But you don't want to just start eating a cup of beans if you never eat it. Right. You want to start so, with a tablespoon and yeah. then two tablespoons tomorrow, then three. Okay. And maybe by the end of a week or two, you're up to be a, a cup a day, which is I eat two cups a day. Um, people say I'm full of beans and they're right. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I know I, I, I know how to make beans taste delicious. And um, yeah. that is the true genius of Blue Zones. Right. It, it is. Can we talk about right. what we, we just made? We made this. Yeah. The Gret salad. I mean, we both love beets. My fiance doesn't love beets, so I can't have them in the house very often, but I was so excited to <laughs> make beet salad because um, I know how good they are for you. Just and the peas in there and the pickled cucumbers and the and the and the pickles and the sauerkraut. I mean, this is a gut oh, that's a, meal. That's it. And that sounds like a probiotic party too. <laughs> right? Probiotic party. Right. They're <laughs> so beautiful and it tastes good. It really is. Um, and also it gives you a lot of energy. It really helps. It helps with oxygenating your blood. Um, great for your heart health. I love right? beets. So. How long did yeah. it take you to make that, Lisa? Oh my God. Like, it wasn't even an hour. Yeah. Wasn't See, even that's the, it was so. And you can, you can pretty much make a meal out of that, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And How does it taste? Does it always soak your beans. Yeah. Like you were talking about soaking the beans the night before is really important. Yeah. Exactly. We always soak our beans for the cleanse. We soak our um, grains. We soak our nuts and seeds, you know, just so people who aren't used to eating all those things have an easier time with digesting them. So, so tell, tell, tell me more about your, your cleanse and your, your business. Um, I've been doing that. So, I had a little bit of cancer at 32. Um, ever since I had an early stage of cancer, I started juicing and eating more legumes and beans and fiber. Um, and then my husband passed away at 45 of cancer. So mm, make a short story. Sorry. Went back to school and got certified in Eastern Western Medicine and then worked with a couple of companies here on their cleanses of uh, restaurants, M Cafe, Cafe Gratitude, did a little work. For oh, yeah, yeah. I totally know those places. Yes. Yeah, so I did their cleanses for a while. And then someone said, hey, put your own cleanse together. And it's been eight years. So it's been really fun just like you i get to feed people and actually deliver food to them for five days that's fresh and then they really get to see what it's like to eat this way like your longevity way you know your blue zone way this is everything that is in the cleanse isn't that a wonderful feeling to presumably you do well and you do good by doing well or yeah. do well by doing good <laughs> yeah exactly but, yeah and are you both are you partners on this business how are the two of you no, we're just, we're just really good friends. Yeah. I just happen to eat everything she makes. We're just, we're both on the same mission. Uh, yeah. We connected years ago and just realized that we really want the same things in life. Um, we want a really full life. We want a calm life. We want to figure out, you know, how to age gracefully um and really have the energy as we age because there's so much that the two of us want to do with our life and our work and janet is into a lot of things on longevity and health and wellness and beauty and fashion so i'm not so much in the beauty and fashion world but she's more in that world with all of the other food and um you know longevity things so we also love how you talk about you know the value of um uh, we're gonna sure. make soup now. We're gonna be on it. Yes. So of friendships. Oh, so oh cool. And eating healthy foods and friendships. And you were saying that a bunch of you know like the the blue zone, the people how they take their nature walks and how they they pray and their value for family. And we Alyssa yeah. and I have a lot of conversations about that too. So in blue zones and just just to give you a little backstory or people who are who are. Uh, uh, listening right now, I know you know the backstory, but 
Yeah. But, um, you know, the idea is to reverse engineer longevity. We spent three years working with demographers to identify five areas where people live the longest. Uh, longest lived women in the world, as I mentioned, Okinawa. Longest lived men are in Sardinia, Italy. Uh, on the island of Icaria, Greece, you have a population who live about eight years longer, but without dementia. Uh, you have the Nicoya Peninsula of Costa Rica, a beautiful place to vacation. And then among the Seventh-day Adventists, in Loma Linda, California, not too far from you. But you go to these places and there are no gyms. Nobody's yeah. on a diet. Nobody's taking supplements. Uh, nobody's yeah. you know, pumping iron or, or doing any of the things that we do to pursue health. So right. if that's, and, and he, these people are manifestly making it to you know, a 90 and 100 without heart disease and diabetes and can, all these chronic diseases that are plaguing our country. So what are they doing? Well, you notice, to your point, uh, they all have very strong social circles. There's, there's a word in Okinawa, Japan, a moai, which essentially means a committed social circle. And we know in America, if you don't have at least three friends you can count on on a bad day, and I'm guessing Elisa is a, one of these good friends where you, don't, you guys aren't just high-fiving each other or talking beauty and celebrity, you guys, I mean, I'll, I'll bet you you helped her through her tough time, you know, coming out of cancer and transitioning her life. I'm just guessing. I don't know. But that's enormously powerful at relieving stress and existential stress that builds up over time, that sort of smoldering fire that causes inflammation in the artery and shrinks your brain. Right. And to your point about cooking, Every Saturday afternoon in the Sardinian Blue Zone, and I've interloped on this three times now, six women come together and they bake bread. And they bake this beautiful sourdough bread. And, you know, they have to chop the wood. They get the, the uh, wood burning oven really hot. They sweep it out. I don't know if you've ever made bread by hand, but, it, it, you know, it's like a workout needing that, needing that dough. You know, some of them have kind of Popeye arms for doing that every week for 30 or 40 years. But yeah. then you just, I just became kind of a fly on the wall and I observed this process. And these ladies start talking to each other. And yeah. while they're kneading out their dough, they're talking out their problems. Yeah. Um, so they're relieving that, that stress. And, you know, on the outside, it's, they're, just, they're just making bread. Yeah. But when you break it down, they're getting exercise. They're connecting socially. They're relieving stress. They're relieving uh, antioxidant. And they emerge, by the way, with a sourdough bread that has about one twentieth as much gluten as a normal, you know, you know white bread, uh, but also it actually lowers the glycemic load of a meal. And at least it, she can tell us what glycemic load means. Yeah. Well, that's you know I first learned about sourdough bread um, from you that that was the best bread if you were going to have it. Um, so I have toast now, you know, maybe three mornings a week. And then I just yeah. take a walk after when I walk my dog, but I didn't realize right. that sourdough toast was so healthy for you. Yeah, it's way better. It's way better than, um, than regular white bread. It's a little bit better if you eat yeah. something else with it though. Uh, I'm sorry. Like I'm a little avocado bit. made. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. That fat would just well, sort of slow the whole thing. Don't you feel like today in, in, our, in our society, especially Americans, it's just we've all become so busy um, that it's not so good. So we really have to make the time and make an effort for us all to get together like they did, you know, back in the day. It's just, uh, it just has a different look to it, but it still has the same uh, results, you know? Yes, it does. But it, it, it's harder here in America. You know, we, we're not necessarily born. Like in Okinawa, when you're a little kid, your mother puts you in these moai. Oh, there's the cooking. What do you got going there? Yeah, yeah me. There's on his, we're doing the last bar, meal. <laughs> so with the oh, pepper, potatoes, onions, and garlic, um, we are doing – I so funny, the caption on this last meal is about fattening up the ancestors to get on the boat. Um, we weren't going to like mention right. anybody that's going to eat it <laughs> because in this society with all of like, do you want to eat, you don't want to really eat something that's going to fatten you up, but it doesn't feel like a fattening meal. So I was a little bit confused with that. 
Dan, I grew up on these black eyed peas. What I, I, I what are, the, I can't quite see them. Oh my! Black eyed pea. Oh my! I love them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those are huge in Ikaria. Yeah, so you know the the the, the bigger story on the the meal you're about to uh, about to make. Um, the Senegalese chef living in in um, uh, New Orleans. He's a, a Michelin starred uh, chef, and uh, he, he he quit his New York job and he went back to Senegal, and he noticed that uh, we started doing his homework where his ancestors came from, and to make if you were an African. Uh, and recently enslaved to make the journey, you had to weigh at least 150 pounds. So what these uh, overlords did was uh, create a slurry of palm oil and black eyed peas. And uh, it, you know, this, you ate it like gruel, it, it was very high calorie, high protein too, by the way, but that would fatten them up to make the journey. Now in the hands of this chef, you know, he unleashed his artistry on it. So, what started out as really kind of an ugly meal, he elevated into something beautiful. And he would uh, in invite these sort of rich New Orleans people and charge them $100 a dish. And they paid, for, I mean, this was just one of a, a few courses, but you know, in a way it was kind of, he enjoyed the irony of, you know, his ancestors being enslaved by the other people ancestor. And now he's serving them $100 uh, versions of the, the last meal. Uh, but uh, it's really an exquisite dish. I'm curious. And, uh, I can't wait for you to taste it. What did he change in it? Do you know? Or to make it more upgraded well, or to charge that? Well, he, he first of all, he didn't start with me, po mirepoix, the, uh, the celery, onions, okay, and, right. and onions you got going there. Right. Uh, he, he, he used an artesian uh, palm oil. Uh, very okay. high high grade, and then uh, he also finished it with flowers. I I think you can see the picture on yeah. it. It looks like a, it looks like a piece of art when when he created. And by the way, that was just one of three or four um, entrees or, or or courses that he offered people who came and ate. But yeah. it was such a wonderful story, and it's a it's a, I'm such a to anybody who's watching. You're right because it's yeah. me. Isn't that beautiful? It's thick, and it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it's probably not going to turn out like that, right? Exactly. Well, I'm sure it'll taste like that. Yeah. That's what's important. Right. Right. So we just were, this is so easy too, 20 minutes to make this soup. Um, Saute all of these veggies with the garlic, the onions, the pepper, the tomatoes. And then we're going to throw in the black eyed peas and the sweet potatoes. Um, we're going to deep, we're going to deglaze with some vinegar. But this isn't in 10 minutes, but does it matter? Yeah, just, okay. Yeah, so. It sounds, it <laughs> looks phenomenal already. Dan, what, what does breakfast look like for you? What do you eat? Most of the time, well, I'll show you actually. Okay. Um. <laughs> so every uh, once a week or so, I make, uh, Actually, the Sardinian minestrone. I'll see if I can. Oh, <laughs> my my phone just went nuts. Okay, you see that? That's it. That's yeah. it. Sardinian minestrone, and it, the, the recipe for that is in my other book, The Blue Zone Kitchen, the first okay. one. But um, the idea behind that, I found the longest lived family in the history of the world, the Melise family. Um, their collective age. Nine siblings. If you add up their years, they did 861 years for nine. Oh siblings. my gosh! <laughs> yeah, wow. they won a Guinness World Record every day of their lives. They had the exact same meal, which is that's minestrone with sourdough bread Yum. and with um, uh, a little glass of red wine. They they have a type of wine, a Grenache grape wine called Cananau. We just call it Blue Zones wine, okay. and. Um, that they had it every day of their life. I start my day with that. I'm a big fan of starting the day with a savory breakfast and a, a lot of complex carbohydrates. <laughs> and that minestrone has three kinds of beans in it. It's had the onions, celery, and um, carrots like you start with, but yep. with some red peppers and uh, tomatoes and potatoes. And it, it's, it's just a, 
it's like it's like uh in your microbiome it's like mardi gras on wednesday night you know with <laughs> party down there and uh but soup for breakfast yeah did i hear it soup rice yeah Breakfast. How often do you have soup in the day? Would you have it once or twice or three times? Well, today I've had it three times. So, so I made it today. I have a bunch of house guests here, um, but uh, it's it's our Basel here in uh, in Miami. So it's kind of yes. Um, you can kind of see the sun's going down here, um, and this is this is this is my blue zone right here. You can kind of That's see. Cute. That's a nice. Um, that way to wake up and see that yeah i go out and swim no, in the ocean every day lucky you it's beautiful yeah. you know i have a question for you because um i have an talking answer about fish and i used to eat a lot of salmon but i know it's not so easy to find the you know good salmon and you said if you're gonna eat fish maybe sardines is the best way to go yeah well, sardines are great. They, I mean, first of all, I'm not a huge, I'm not here to promote fish. And by the way, they didn't eat a lot of fish in, in the blue zone. But when they did, it was usually this sort of middle food chain uh, uh, fish. We like sardines, quite honestly, or anchovies. They're high in omega-3 fatty acids. Um, they, and they, they tend to not be really long-lived apex predators. So they don't have as many as much mercury and the other toxins that build up and you know swordfish and and tuna which is also yeah pretty full of mercury um but a wild caught salmon is also not a bad uh you know not a bad choice if you feel like you need to eat fish okay. um i what do you think of intermittent fasting it's become you know of course all the craze um i've been intermittent fasting and ended up eating just two meals a day. It seems to like balance everything, hormones and weight and diet. yeah. No, I. What do you think of that? I think of well, first of all, people in all blue zones intermittent fasting. They didn't call it that. They did. That's just the way they live. Oh. They ate breakfast like a king, lunch like a, a prince, and dinner like a pauper, which in some cases meant no dinner. And oh. uh, there's 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 actually a pretty good study out that that uh, shows for BMI and also metabolic health. The best pattern, this comes from the Seventh-day Adventist, is eating a breakfast at 10 a.m. and then a dinner at 4, and you call okay. it quits. Wow, yeah, that's and, um, cause you're, that's, because you're, go ahead. Your social life a little bit at night. Yeah, that's the problem. It's hard to be, you know, hipsters in L.A. like you right. two and, uh, you know, and, and being and done eating that. dinner at, hell, that's before happy hour, you know, that's, that's tough. Oh, this smells so it good. It smells so good. Oh, oh my God. You can God. almost smell it from here. So I'm you so guys excited. having a bunch of people I love to over? As well. So a lot of our soups on the cleanse are blended more so than they're chunky. Um, I think we have another question. Yeah. Are regular sweet potatoes as good as the, oh. the, the purple ones? Are, are the regular sweet potatoes that you usually find at the market, are they as beneficial to you as the purple ones? Almost. The difference Almost. is the purple that in the, the pigment, the purple pigment uh, contains the same antioxidant as the purpleness in blueberries, but oh. about 150% more. Oh, so you get a little bit of an antioxidant bump if you're eating the purple sweet potatoes. And I'll give you a super simple recipe for those. I sort of have a version of it in the Blue Zones American Kitchen. But all you do is steam, peel them and steam them. And then oh. mash them with coconut milk. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's gorgeous. It's Amazing. delicious. Coconut milk. coconut milk, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh. And, you know, if you can put a little bit of coconut milk and have them pretty thick, or you can even have them kind of runny. And, um, you know, I, I do these Blue Zone dinners occasionally, you know, for charity and that sort of thing. And um, I'll always serve minestrone. I make a, inspired by Costa Rica, I make a ceviche out of, out of, uh, palm hearts and then i make that um uh the the these uh sweet potato puree uh i call it a mousse and then for dessert i do a tofu and also coconut with the fruit compote on top and i put a little bit of brandy in the fruit compote and uh and honey and uh man i'll tell you what people people want to come back oh i bet <laughs> i love hearts of palm 
Someone was asking about cabbage. cabbage. Yeah. Right, red and purple, and I know there's green. Oh, it's a, it's a yeah, it's a, f a fantastic food. So one, there's one theory, you know, it's a cruciferous vegetable, like like a broccoli or cauliflower or kohlrabi. And there's a, um, um, a, a component of, of um, cruciferous foods that, that downregulate your thyroid. And one of the interesting theories in, in Sardinia, they, when you download, downregulate your thyroid, uh, you you don't burn as hot, so to speak. You know, it's it's sort of like a cricket lighter. Um, if you put the flame way down, the cricket lighter is going to last a lot longer as opposed to putting the flame way up. Well, um, the, you know, apart from all the vitamins and the fibers and the probiotic potential of cabbage, um, you also have this very slight down regulation of the thyroid, which, you know, we don't know. I mean, where all of my work is uh, correlations or associations, we can't tell you exactly one thing causes the other, but we can tell you they eat a lot of cruciferous vegetables like cabbage and they live a long time. So yeah. you can draw your own conclusions. And because is that, for instance, do you, is it fermented cabbage like kimchi, right? Kimchi or sauerkraut. Or and sauerkraut. That, both of those okay. are fantastic foods. Yeah. In fact, it's, you know, rather than going out and buying a pill, uh, I keep kimchi in my in my refrigerator, so I and I just fork out a chunk of it every morning. First thing I eat in the morning is a piece a piece of kimchi, and uh, that that uh, inoculates your your microbiome with that healthy bacteria that um, that they they make what's called short chain fatty acids. So the okay. good bacteria in your in your in your gut. Yeah. The the only thing they eat, they don't eat protein, they don't eat fat, they don't eat carbohydrates, they eat fiber. And only uh, about 5% of Americans can get enough fiber. But when you feed those bacteria fiber of all kinds, they reward you with short chain fatty acids, which in your bloodstream, lower inflammation, they fine tune yeah. your immune system, and they actually release hormones that make you feel good. So yeah. This, you know, I wrote about three years ago, I wrote a story for National Geographic on the diets of longevity. Oh, my God. So you're going to puree that. Yes. 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 Can, it. You, can you smell it through oh, the screen? I can smell it. It's, it's, it smells savory I, and rich. And, at the end. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, wait, there was another question too. Someone so, asked about how do you feel about regular potatoes or do you always go for the sweet potato? I think regular potatoes are under celebrated, okay. especially if you can somehow eat the skin too, because a lot of vitamins are in the skin. Okay. But, I, but once again, if you're eating a potato, you want to eat it with something else because there is a lot of, you know, starch. Yeah. I mean, it's healthy food in, in my opinion, but you know, to put a little bit of olive oil, or if you eat butter, put in butter on there, or to eat it with a vegetable or another protein, because that's going to lower the glycemic load of that. Because remember, we, we don't eat foods, most of the time, you don't just eat one food, you mix it with a bunch of food, you know, yeah. that, that's on your plate. And the impact of that is, is healthy. But, so eating a white potato all by itself, I don't know if I'd do that, but including potatoes in your uh, meals, 100%. Okay. I usually eat a lot of vegetables first for some reason. I'm just kind of like, you know, intuitively want to have salad and or yeah. vegetables. And then I have my starchy grains or potatoes. I think they're so crucial for people. I try to get my clients to not be like take carbs out of their diet because they're full of minerals. They calm down your central nervous system, don't they? Yeah. There, I can list about 20 things that... Um, the, the let me tell you, people don't realize this. The longest of people in the world eat a high carbohydrate diet, right? But where the nuance comes in, and I, by the way, I think carbohydrate is the worst word in the nutrition dic dictionary because um, both jelly beans, which are simple carbs, and lentil beans, which are complex carbs, are carbohydrates. The simple carbs are the worst food in our food system. And the complex carbs are the best. 
And, yeah. you know, we lump them all in. And, the, you know, especially these sort of carnivores, you know, who are lambasting a plant-based uh, diet, they always point to the simple carbohydrates, which gives kind of all vegetables a bad name. But right. it's just the opposite. I'm going to turn up my light here a little bit. Okay, I'm worried. It, it, it got dark. There we go. It's super thin. Now I see why it's really, really, really pretty. So let's hear it out here. I'll pour it into the bowl. Look at that color. It's gold. So look did, what kind of oil did you use for that? I used coconut oil. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Good. What kind of vegetable oil, when you say vegetable oil, what kind of vegetable oil do you use? I only use, well, 90% of the time I'm using extra virgin olive oil. Oh, uh, okay. okay. So when you say vegetable oil, you're talking about extra virgin olive oil, huh? Not yeah. I, I think, you know, I mean, this is all dose dependent. I, I mean, a little bit of coconut oil in that, uh, in that um, soup is not going to bother you. But, ha you know, it's saturated fat, um, mm -hmm. coconut oil. And a little bit's good, a lot not good. Um, right. But also like for... I use extra virgin olive oil too, but I was thinking that when you say vegetable oil, I would have thought you said olive oil when I look at a recipe. So... Um, yeah, well, the original recipe used palm oil, which is... Yeah, okay. Dan, this is yeah. so delicious. Thank you. It, <laughs> is, it is a meal in itself. It is really it's good. It's, it's all you need, by the way. There's as much protein in that bowl as there is in a small hamburger. Oh, so you're getting... You're not, uh, I believe you're it. You're also getting about half of your daily fiber needs of that one bowl alone. Yeah. And there's a ton of, of uh, vitamins and micronutrients in there. And judging by the way you're, you're wolfing that down, it must taste pretty good. <laughs> like I said, she cooks, I eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're both experts. Yeah, and we're just, we just, we love soup. We love, I love beans <laughs> and legumes. I can't get enough of them. So, and I can't get enough fiber. That's what I tell everyone as well. So I'm not the so Dan, mm -hmm. I have a question. Have you found that with social media, is it helping to get your blue zone longevity, the importance of healthy food, food is medicine? Do you feel like it's, it's getting larger and more understood? Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm not, um, I, I probably don't spend as much time and effort on social media as I should. I mean, I'm doing it now because I have a book coming out next week. Yeah, right. um, I, I, it's a good way to connect with individuals. Like, I mean, I, I, you know, I've just met you guys because of social media and I'm very thankful for that. And, and I, I meet a good number of people like that. And I think there's an upside. I mean, traditionally I would go write my books and then at pub time, I would go on good morning America or the today show or CNN or Fox, but that was all now moving to social media. So this is really the first time that I'm trying to spend time on social media and you know, I'm meeting a ton of wonderful people, like-minded people. Yeah, well, I just want you to know with our community, yeah. you really, you're super popular and we throw your name around a lot. Dan Buechner, Dan Buechner. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> Very happy new book well, I want to meet this community in, uh, in, uh, in person. Yeah, right. Well, you let us know when you're yes, coming when you're here. in town. You're also I'll be there in two weeks. Social now, you know, yeah. like you said, you weren't on as much and it's really beautiful to have someone like you on there that is preaching something that we believe in. Yes. And just the whole, like, take, the food is medicine. It's important for us to, uh, well, thank goodness, we have your voice and others. And like Alyssa, it's like we can learn so much about nutrition. So it's And great. just feed ourselves nutrition instead of taking supplements. And, yeah. Right? That's. Yeah. I mean, the way, the way you guys eat, you probably don't need supplements. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I will say, you know, in the Blue Zone, these, these people are manifestly uh, making it to, uh, um, older age that they're not suffering from diabetes they're robust their minds are sharp they never took a pill in their lives 
Yeah. You know, which just reinforces to me that we can get all the nutrients we need and probably get the better nutrients by eating the right food. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. You know, I want to ask you, I also saw, it, it, it's in your book, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. And you recently- Oh my God. Yeah. And so you've been doing some work. Your team has been doing a little bit of work there. Could you let me know where they are? Well, we have a staff there, I think six full-time people. But you know, I mean, my, I write for National Geographic as an advocation, but my full-time job in, in uh, 2009, I, uh, I got the idea of, of manufacturing a blue zone. And you know, the, the central idea for the, the secret to longevity is not trying to pursue health by diet or exercise. That always fails. I mean, there's a single digit percentage of people who have the presence of mind and the discipline to do the right thing for 40 years and avoid the wrong thing. But most people fail. Um, the insight from Blue Zones, they don't have better discipline. They don't have better individual responsibility. They simply live in environments where the healthy choice is easier. Right. And my company, we get paid from insurance companies to take a team of people to go into a city and help the city council select policies that favor healthy food over junk food, that favor the pedestrian over the automobile, that favor the non-smoker over the smoker. Yeah. And then we have a certification program that went very well in Fort Worth, where we get about 30 to 40% of all restaurants and grocery stores, I think it was the HEB there. Yeah. Um, the whole school district uh, became Blue Zone certified. A lot of the big churches down there, the big employers, Bell and um, yeah. you'll, you'll play. And the, the idea is you, you take over an entire city and you, you set up nudges and defaults so that the 200 or so unconscious decisions you make throughout the day, what you grab for to eat, and how you get around and how you socialize, those unconscious decisions are, are, just a little bit better throughout the day. So it's not a silver bullet, yeah. it's silver buckshot. Yeah. And um, in Fort Worth, in uh, four years, I don't know if you know Betsy Price, she was our mayor when she was a phenomenal woman, but um, we were managed to lower the BMI of the entire city by about 3%, which uh -huh. doesn't sound like a lot, but the rest of Texas got yeah. fatter you know, in those five years. Yep. And Gallup yep. calculates we saved the, the city about a quarter of a billion dollars a year in projected health care costs. So, um, so are you doing that more in different cities then, as many across the country as you can? Yeah, so people, we don't have a lot, really a marketing division. We, we, we do our work. People, we figure that if a city... Uh, once is really committed, they, they come to us. About 400 cities have asked to become Blue Zone oh. project cities. We've only picked 71 to date. And, uh, you know, everybody's got to be signed up. The mayor, the city council, yeah. the CEOs, the yeah. Chamber of Commerce, that. superintendent of school. Because we can't be successful unless we can reshape the entire living environment so yeah. uh, we can impact enough people. And that really requires buy-in from leadership. Well, and a lot of time. also tomorrow, don't you have your summit going on? So if you pre-order your book, you can automatically watch the summit? Yes. All you have to do is show that you, and it's very easy. All you have to do is show you bought the book. So it's free admission if you own a Blue Zones American Kitchen book. And, and uh, so for that, uh, I actually went out and interviewed 10 of the top experts I met writing this book and uh, in my Blue Zones work, some of the best longevity experts on earth are uh, on that. And, uh, you know, most of the time you have to pay for these things. It's hundred percent free for anybody who becomes part of the blue zone, American kitchen readership family. Well, congratulations yeah. on that. Yes. Um, Thank and you. we're here. <laughs> if you need us and you come to LA or you need anything, just let us know. Okay. Because we, we love, I'm going to, I will be in Los Angeles in two weeks. Awesome. And I want to come meet your community. Yes. yes. Okay. Let me know. Okay. Let's, let's do go. it. Let's yeah. do it. All right. Do it. All right. I can, well, I'll meet you guys in person. You guys are just the best thing. I don't know to what lucky star I have to thank that you two came in my life and embraced the, the book and me. And I just want to thank you so much for paying attention and be 
being the beautiful souls inside and out that you are. And, uh, you know, in Sardinia, and when people pass each other on the street, instead of saying Buona Sera, they say Akentanos. You know what that means? Okay. It means I'll see you when you're 100. Oh, so, Akentanos. Yeah. You just gave me a new daily uh, <laughs> yeah, mantra right there. All right, you guys. Well, I love you. So Join us. Big hug, and we'll enjoy that beautiful soup. We will. Okay, we will. We look forward to meeting you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. All right, I loved it. Bye, Dan. Ciao, ciao. Thanks, Bye. Bye.